Hi folks and welcome to CRK Imaging live streaming station, the live streaming channel where we bring you all the latest and greatest in imaging products at a very safe social distance. The product that we're, <laughs> the product that we're talking about here today is the latest generation of Ricoh GR cameras, the Ricoh GR3. And the man that we have to walk us through this little camera is Hamish Tame who is a long-time Rico ambassador and friend of the company. So welcome to you, Hamish. Thank you. Great to be here. Um, so what we're hearing now um, for this Easter break is that everyone needs to stay at home, isolate, don't go out. So what better opportunity is there to turn your isolation into creation, uh, explore a new hobby or fine-tune a creative passion? And the camera we have here today is something that's really going to enable you to do that, to take your photography to the next level and turn isolation into creation. Now, Hanish, I know you've got a, a wealth of experience as a professional photographer and a very long time uh, Ricoh GR user, way back from the analog days. Yeah, look, um, the, it's interesting. I've, I've worked as a commercial photographer all my life and um, I had a friend, Alan Davies, at the State Library. He was the head curator of photography at the yeah. State Library and um, he used to walk from you know, Central Station to the State Library every day and he used to wear an Olympus camera around yes. his neck. And then one day I'm chatting to him at the State Library and he goes, oh, I like my new camera. And I was going, yeah. I, I, he said, oh, what, what, what is it? And he pulls out of his top pocket, the little Rico. And it's the film version, of course. Okay. And, and I go, oh, what's that little toy? Yeah. And then he starts showing me some prints. I go, gee, that's a nice lens on it, right? So I went and got one. Mm. And that was um, my first GR, and I've been shooting with them ever since. Fantastic. And, and then form. eventually becoming a, uh, a GR ambassador. Yeah, look, it's funny. When you just keep doing it, and look, for me, the camera is the perfect size. It's portable, beautiful sharp lens, yep. of course. And, of course, each iteration keeps getting better and more usability and, of course, with the bigger uh, sensors and ability to shoot and resolve at greater resolution in lower and light, lower and lower light. It's, it just keeps getting better. Now, as we know, this new uh, generation of Ricoh GR cameras is a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor. It's got the uh, SLR size sensor within that tiny, tiny pocketable body. Um, so because of this, it's an extremely portable camera and it's referred to as the ultimate street photographer's camera. Uh, Hamish, I've got to ask you, in street photography, uh, there's this concept of the decisive moment. So if we're talking to folks at home who are wanting to get into this type of photography, how would you describe that decisive moment and how does this camera fit into your street photography? Yeah, look, street photography is, to my mind, one of the hardest uh, disciplines in photography of all because you've got a whole bunch of stuff that you need to come together in this perfect little moment. You need to have First of all, you need to have a beautiful setting. You've got to have beautiful light. Mm. And then you've got to have people walking through that space or interacting with that space. And there's this fourth element there, which is so hard to nail down, but it's almost like the mood of that space, the energy of that time, and that, the way that people are interacting with that light and space and energy and the, the sun and the, the humidity and everything else. Yeah. And as a photographer, what I often do is you walk into a space and you'll just see this beam of light yeah. coming through and you'll pull the camera out and this is where once you know your camera well you can you've got your pre-focuses there and everything else and you're just waiting for that that right moment that little person that person to walk yep. through that little thing that shadow to be right and often it's just a single frame and it is so damn hard to get but when it works it is it is very very satisfying and so the decisive moment uh Cartier Bresson yep. uh, of course you know the godfather of street photography came up with that phrase and it was that idea of trying to bring all those things together into that one moment and that's what I, in my own way, try to achieve. Fantastic. And as we said, you've been using the GR uh, platform for a long time yeah, now. Yeah. Um, what is it about the GR? What are the features that keep coming back, that keep you coming back? 
Look, it, it's, so, it, it's so simple. Look, it's a tiny little thing. Um, yeah. It is a, well, you know, it, I, I carry it in my bag. Yeah. Um, and I used to keep it on my hip all the time. Um, and that idea of you've got to have a camera with you because um, I just put something up on Instagram today uh, and it was driving through the yep. inner city Randwick and I always literally, in, even in the car, have it ready yep. and pre-focused. And driving beside in the car was this, this weird, I think it was part of a set building company. Yep. And there's an elephant, literally a full-size elephant in the back of, it's made of fiberglass, yes. in the back of this truck. And you, now if I had my SLR with me, yep. I would have had to have reached down, turn it on, pre-focus, you know, it's, it's all too hard. Yep. And when you've got a camera with you and it's this size and that small, you are ready to take those shots. And when you've used the camera for a long time, you know where the buttons are and you don't have to think too much about it. And there's, you've literally got seconds to get that, get that shot. And it is, so size, physical size. form fa factor, yeah. incredibly sharp lenses. Uh, the, you know, the, the resolution, the accutance on the lenses is incredibly mm. high. For a, lot, for a long time, it was actually sharper than the film available in the old days. And uh, for a little while then, the actual lenses were sharper than the, the capacity of the sensor to resolve that, those images. Um, it is beautiful to be able to shoot with. And you, if you look at a, one of the graphs, you can show there's very little drop off into yep. the corners. Um, so it, it look, technically beautiful, compact size, and hey, it's kind of sexy. It's a little black. And it little looks good. good. They've, they've kept that, that form factor, <laughs> that kind of design for a long time. And even though the GR3 looks very similar to its predecessor, the GR2, there is a whole heap of new features in this model. Um, so if we talk about street photography, do you set yourself uh, any particular rules when you're going out shooting street photography or is it a bit more freestyle in the way that you work? Yeah, look, this, this is, uh, photography is easy, right? Yeah. You can... Well, if you say so, if you say so, <laughs> Hamish, if you no, say so, no, that's no, all right. Look, because literally, if you wanted to, you could put yeah. it on full auto and press it at everything that looks really good to you. And I'm yes. like, photographers are birds. Yep. We're creative people. We go, oh, look at that, a shiny thing, you know. Yep. And let's photo, oh, sunset, you know, a bit of rubbish, a bag flying in the wind. We can photograph everything. But um, after a couple of years of shooting everything, yes. you realise that it means nothing if you've got everything. So what you need to do is actually nail down into a, a style yep. that is hopefully yours. And that may be an amalgam of a thousand blogs you've read and a million books and art history theory you've studied and bits and pieces. But... I set myself rules. Yeah. My street photography, always vertical. Okay, that's a good rule. If everyone out there at home, you're looking to get into street photography, a good rule to have everything vertical. So for me personally, everything, if I'm doing street photography, it's always vertical. It always must include, uh, for my mind, a, a character, a yep. figure. So I always try to go a larger um, scene, like a building, a beautiful patch of light. And then it's that moment of that person walking through and. And after having shot uh, fashion photography yes. for years, catwalk, it's all about very important to get the legs yep. lined up at the right moment. So I actually bring that over into my street photography. The stride has to be perfect. And if the stride is not perfect, I will not ever use that image. So Fantastic. it's going to be technically perfect. I never crop. Yes. Never crop an image. As if you see my images, they are the images that are shot out of camera. And if I can't get it right, and this is, you set rules because yes. it's too easy. Sure. No, so, we want to hear the rules. This is all about exploring something new and learning and a, so about a new art. If, and that's where occasionally you'll afterwards, you go, oh, damn it, I got the side of a tree in the frame yeah. or something like that. I won't use that image. I will either look, it's a funny thing, the great thing about digital is, of course, yes. you know exactly when you shot it. So I often have a little calendar of events that I actually set, okay, I want to go back to that same patch of light a year from now and reshoot that patch of light mm. and, I'm, and I won't get that tree in it next time. Or if I happen to be able to go there the next day. Because in winter time, so yeah. I, I tend to shoot winter time, yep. the shadows are longer, uh, so you get this beautiful leading into camera. Yep. I tend to shoot into the light, always vertical, never crop, and obviously you've got to be able to get it right in terms Fantastic. of exposure and stuff like that. Yeah, well, I mean, it sounds great, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to link below as to where we can view your work, or, or where, where, where can we see it? Oh, look, for the most part, Instagram is great. You know, um, you can see me at hamish.tame on Instagram or shot by Hamish on Instagram. I've got some portraits up there as well, shot with the same camera. So I've got two different approaches. But the street photography yes. is a bunch of very formal rules. And because, as I said, it's too easy. You need to make it harder for yourself. And once you've made it harder for yourself, you can set yourself apart from other people. 
Absolutely. And so one of the key points about this uh, little pocket size camera is it's got an SLR size sensor in it. It's got that APS-C size SLR sensor in it. The same sensor that's used in several of our Pentax DSLRs. So I've got to ask you, Hamish, um, what makes you choose the GR over an SLR camera or a mirrorless camera when you've got to go out and shoot? Look, it is working as a commercial photographer. I, I work in studio settings. I work with lighting and big cameras and often quite a few people. You've often got an art director, a stylist, you've got a makeup team if it's a fashion thing. You, it's a big team involved. And an SLR camera is a really important part of that. You, you of course, it's funny, it's almost a perception issue. Yeah. If, if I turned up to a shoot with one of these little dudes, they wouldn't be feeling comfortable paying me my, my day rate. So Understandable, <laughs> it's, it's all it's about the look as well. You gotta yeah. look the part. That's right, So, but it feels like work. And so when I've got an SLR, yeah. it kind of feels like work. And where this is, I'm in the wonderful situation where uh, photography is my job. Yes. It's my commercial job, but it's also my hobby. God, I love it. I love it. And to be able to go and shoot and differentiate the two different camera systems and leave the SLR in the, in the camera gear and take out a little camera. I've always got it with me, so I don't ever not have it with me. And it means that you've got a different headspace. And that idea, of, I've read it quite a few times before, the idea of the camera becoming an extension of your arm yep. or your eye. And having a physically lightweight camera, I don't know how many grams, it's not very heavy, uh, it means that you actually, it is almost true, that idea of an extension of your arm or your eye. So, Hamish, also I've got an important announcement to make live. During the live stream is, uh, we've been in touch with our sales guys upstairs and we are launching an Easter sale on our website, pentax.com.au, wow. which is a 15% off the entire website. Amazing. So if you've ever been interested in getting this Ricoh GR camera that we're talking about today, there has never been a better time to buy it. Go to pentax.com.au to purchase. But what's more, Hamish, is that there's 15% off everything. All Pentax SLRs, all Pentax binoculars, wow. Pentax lenses. So guys, we've brought that forward a little bit early. It's gonna run through the that's, Easter holiday weekend. That's gonna make this an incredibly cheap camera with the Australian exchange we, rate. At, I'm so glad you brought that up. <laughs> I mean, and we invite the viewers at home to shop this around. You cannot beat this price off our Pentax website. As you know, the prices are already hot. If you take another 15% off, it's the best price in the world. This price cannot be beaten. We invite you guys to shop wow. around. If you find a cheaper price anywhere, contact us through the site and we will match it. But you won't because they're the world's best pricing. Amazing. So guys, if you ever want to get into it, this camera that Hamish has been talking about today, there's never been a better time to do it. Um, so Hamish, getting back to uh, photography and you know exploring a new passion and, and a creative outlet, um, it's interesting talking to you because you've got an art background. Yeah. So how does that how does that come into play when when you when you're shooting on the GR? So um, educationally, I yep. started a Bachelor of Arts degree uh, at Newcastle Uni, and uh, in that wonderful situation mm. in an art degree, in first year they make you do drawing yes. and sculpture uh, and eventually photography, and it's all a six week little subject, and it's meant to be a little taster. The idea yep. is that you're going an immersive experience into the visual arts. And I started off, and they, let, they literally give you a camera uh, and you team up with a few other people, you have to shoot a portrait, and yeah. you develop the images and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, but alongside that technical knowledge, they also build you up with art history theory. Yeah. And I dropped out of that, did a technical degree uh, through TAFE, and then I started exhibiting, and then I actually went off to do a master's degree in fine art. Yeah. And it's interesting, you do learn a lot of art history theory, which is interesting, but what probably the, the thing that you learn at art school, and there's almost a, two different ways of being a photographer. You've got, people actually call themselves yes. photographers versus an artist. And a photographer defines themselves by the camera gear they use. Whereas an artist will often actually yep. come up with an idea to start with. And the idea is an exploration of responses to the world, all ideas and theories. And then they'll actually look for a medium in which to explore that. And so it's actually the idea comes first and the photography comes later. And so for me, after having gone through a few different technical things, um, the idea of realizing that at art school, often yep. you can divorce uh, the images from aesthetics. They don't have to be beautiful. Uh, and that for me was a shock because I'd come from a technical background, I'd done a technical degree, I'd been working as a commercial photographer and suddenly going to art school and realizing that 
not the landscape in front of you, but the pile of trash at your feet was just as an important observation of the time and space was equally as important as the beautiful landscape in front of yep. you. It was a big, it was a big ch game changer and that aesthetics aren't necessarily the most important thing. I still love yep. making beautiful images, but, um, and you also then realize when you start learning about the history of photography, about all the different ways of, that people have pushed the medium and the ideas behind it. Uh, people have gone into techniques around scientific photography. I mean, the ring flash yep. was originally a scientific and medical uh, format of you know, photographing stuff. Yes. And so, right. of course, then it got uh, absorbed by the fashion world. Yes, and nice portraits with the ring flash, that's right? That's beautiful. That's exactly right. And so what it does is eventually actually sets you free. Mm. You realise that once you've studied a little bit, you realise that there are no boundaries. Um, and as long as you've got a strong idea, and you can execute it in a way that is either consistent with your own philosophy or if you like technically or however, uh, you, there's nothing, there is no single defining truth. Um, yeah, and it's lovely to have studied and it actually does broaden your ideas and actually also builds your great network of galleries and all that kind of things. Okay, guys watching at home, if, if you're interested to ask a question during the broadcast at any time, let me know. Um, it looks like we have a few questions coming through. And just, just a reminder that the stock we have on the GR3 is limited. So we're doing this 15% off sale. It's not going to last, uh, probably won't last for the whole weekend. The stock won't last, the sale's going through the whole weekend. But if you're interested, jump on our website, pentax.com.au and get the GR3 at the world's best price. I think it's $14.85 less at 15%. Um, there's never really been a better time to buy. Um, and so we touched on uh, portraiture to, um, you know, when you're telling us about your art background there, Hamish, um, people would not necessarily um, obviously equate the GR3 as a portrait camera. How do you find it works for that medium and uh, do you have any tips and tricks behind yeah, that? Yeah, look, um, portraiture of course is a, normally it's an approach where you shoot vertically as in portrait mode, that's why they call yeah. it that, um, and often with a slightly longer lens and quite often in a commercial context, with a white background. Um, street portraiture is yeah. something which is it's a slightly different approach. Um, street portraiture for me, and well in fact any portraiture, is about engagement yeah. and it's about interaction and it's about empathy and it's about, I mean, genuine fascination with people's lives. Yeah. And I, so that's when, I'm going to come back to this story, sure. but um, having a context. So. Of course, to show this is an equivalent of a 28 mm lens. It's yep. a reasonably wide angle lens. If you were to shoot a vertical portrait with this camera gear, you would get distortion. Mm. You know, you would pe people's chins would look long and their forehead yep. look. But the way I actually shoot with it is horizontally. This is a good tip. And so I actually shoot, I center the people in the frame. Uh, so, you know, yep. shot, shot horizontally. The person's uh, face is centered. So in fact, if you, if you imagine to crop that out, it's actually probably the equivalent of a 50 mil lens. Mm. But what, it, what you do, all, that, all the distortion is on the edges of the frame. And that's where you put context in. And so I, I, about two, two years ago, I had a yep. regular con a contract uh, and I had to spend an hour and a half getting to this and I started catching the train. Yep. And I suddenly realized that I was not having much opportunity to do my street photography. And I was struggling, to, mm. you know, because a, a creative project is what keeps you going yes. when you're doing commercial work. And so I, it's funny, I was looking out the window of the train one day and it's one of those beautiful moments. There's a kind of a factory thing going past and there's this woman in front of me um, looking to the same direction and the reflections were just beautiful. And I go, that's it. Mm. That's going to be my next project, which is portraits, in, but including context. And so I've also done a little bit of work uh, over the years as a journalist doing some yep. writing. And I, I, like, I like writing. It's, mm. it's, it's good. I, like, I consume a lot of uh, stories and I like... You know, I've done a lot of writing myself. Sure. So I thought, perfect combination. So once again, the camera you've got with you is the perfect one. So I set myself a target mm. every day to shoot a portrait and do a quick interview. And so the next morning I went to the railway station, I was jeed myself yeah. up, because it's hard, right? To yes, go up to a, perfect, a total indeed. stranger and say, hello, I'm starting an art project. Yeah. And it was like almost like a gift from God because there at the railway station were two Mormon missionary sisters. Interesting. I didn't even know yeah. there was such a thing. Anyway, there's two young women and they've got the little name tags on. Yeah. 
And they were, they'd lost their Opal card. And anyway, I was chatting to them and I said, look, oh, yeah, we, they found it. I said, look, I'm starting a new art project and you're going to be the very first ones. I'm going to shoot a portrait every day, but I'm also want to do a little interview, like not even, a bit of a chat about where you're off to today. And so I said, oh, look, in exchange for doing a quick portrait of you two young women, just snap, yeah. um, I shot three frames. Um, we'll sit on the train, for my, my train trip for that leg of it was 45 minutes. And if it's okay, we'll have a chat. And they were very excited because oppor an opportunity to, pro to proselytize. Oh, fantastic. Um, to take you in. Maybe even convert <laughs> you, Amy. I want to invite you yeah. to a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, anyway, so. You can that meet was my, new friends with the GR camera. You can meet new friends. Um, anyway, so that was amazing. And, um, and so that got me started. Yeah. And it's interesting. So the idea of shooting horizontally, I wanted to uh, distinguish it from the street photography, which sure. is always vertical. So this portrait's always horizontal, faces centered. But then I actually sit there and I only shoot four frames, four or five frames, and it's after a conversation. Yeah. Where are you off to? And I, I love the idea of these um, little parallel journeys because we all have these yeah. incredibly disparate lives. And on a railway, at a, at a train, all these lives coming together and they're going parallel to each mm. other just for a short moment. Sometimes it's between two ra railway stations or if it's a longer trip, it's 45 minutes. Yep. And then they disperse again. And I love that idea of lives becoming parallel just for that short time and we're sharing a, an experience there. And so often I'm just chatting to people and go, oh, where are you off to today? Yep. Oh, cool. Yeah, look, oh, cool. You're off to work, chatting. I mean... How do people normally respond, Hamish, when you come up with a GR camera and you ask them if they can, you can take their portrait on the train? How, what's, the, what's the normal response? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it 50-50? Well, you start with a chat. And yeah. then you say, oh, look, I started this project. And I said, oh, often you say, oh, look, if you, are you on Instagram yourself? You look and have a look at them. And they can look, they can go, oh, wow, they look really pretty. They're all in black and white. And so they've because got a, a, a certain aesthetic. Because this is a good tip for people going out who are wanting to go out and shoot and maybe take random portraits. Yes. It's yeah. a big part of street photography. Is how, do you, how do you approach people? Have a little bit of credibility mm -hmm. by having gone to all your family and friends and shot their portraits, perhaps, and put them on Instagram or wherever. Or on your phone, just go, oh, this is what I'm working on. And just have them all black and white or all sepia or something. So people go, oh, actually, that, oh, I could look like that. That'd look great. Yeah. But I think before then, you actually have built empathy and, and engagement. And I'm look, genuinely fascinated because those two ladies, I've never, yeah. I've never met two missionary sisters before like that. And then literally the next, the next train I had to, ch had to catch, there was an old bloke on the train. And he was telling me about his life and bits and pieces. I had one railway station. And then you know, on the way home, there was a lady and she's all fancy, got pearls yeah. and all that stuff. And she's part of a women's club, you know, an exclusive women's yeah. club in the city. And then the next train, there was a guy with the tattoos on his face and yeah. no teeth. And he'd just been from a, from a court hearing. And did he respond well when you oh, came up? Absolutely. Yeah. Because they, people have got a really finely tuned bullshit mm. detector. Yeah. They know if you're trying to sell them something or take advantage of them. People, look, I genuinely go up to go, that's amazing. Where are you off to? How did we come into this little moment together in this one space of time? And isn't that amazing? Mm, oh, wow, okay. And this guy with the tattoos on his face. I mean, yeah. I, and I just said, oh, dude, what's with the tattoos yeah. on your face? And there were and Roman numerals, and I hate to say it, but I couldn't actually, I'm terrible at Roman yeah. I didn't know what, that, what it yeah. was. He says, oh, that's the year I was born. And well, then I realized, and he's a, oh, well, I, and that's the thing that confused me after. So, so what, if you look in the mirror, yeah. it's not going to be the right way around. That's right. So you can't, anyway, I never fully understood that. But anyway, but interesting he stories. Made for, he made for a good subject. You got a good shot of him, I yeah, assume. I assume that's it right. look good. Yeah. Um, so just for you guys at home, uh, the sales guys upstairs are telling us we've already had a few of these drop off the website now. So if you're interested, get on. 15% off has just gone live, pentax.com.au. I think this is the smallest uh, compact camera that has a full DSLR sized APS-C sensor built into the body. Of course, a couple of new features that came out on this model, Hamish, from the GR2 to the GR3 is shake reduction built into the body. Mm -hmm. So. Um, <laughs> as with the Pentax uh, SLR cameras, yep. um, you have that uh, sensor shift shake reduction. Um, and what are some of the features of, of this camera that, that you really like in particular? Yeah, look, I have always just about always used this camera on manual focus. Okay, and interesting. I love the fact that on the back of this camera, it's got a depth of field preview scale. And you can set the focus at three meters but it tells you at f2.8 or whatever aperture you're at that you'll have focus between 1.5 meters yep. and infinity. Okay. And you can actually set that manually. And so I know that just um, shooting this scene here and there's a beautiful patch of light coming through and some protesters working through and there's a guy flare, whatever. And I know that anything from two meters to infinity is in yep. focus. 
So that's one. That's how I use it that way. Pretty handy. That's a handy little tip Beautiful. for you guys at home. Yep. Thanks for that, Hamish. And the other one, of course, is when I'm shooting the portraiture, your depth of field is incredibly narrow um, because I'm shooting wide open. Mm -hmm. And I am often about a metre, barely a metre from that person. So you're always shooting down at uh, f2.8? Yeah, but um, that's, I use that autofocus. I see. And so this is where this new cool camera is you can literally compose the frame and then you, wherever you touch on the back screen of the camera is where it will focus. And then it will take the photograph. So you actually, it's actually touch focus and touch shooting. So I've got to say, it's incredibly useful. Yeah. A leaf shutter. Leaf shutter, yeah. Leaf we like, shutter. We like that. Um, anyway, so incredibly useful. And look, uh, it has great video capacity. Uh, but for me, uh, the depth of field preview on manual focus and then the touch focus and shooting on the back of the camera is wonderful. Yeah, there's a big, uh, uh, one of the great new developments with this GR model, the GR3, is that it has a touch screen on the back, <laughs> which is great to see that kind of um, ability. Now we're also familiar with using touch screens. Um, and uh, what have you been shooting lately, Hamish? Is there, uh, uh, you've got a new project on, on the go? Uh, yeah, well, no, it's, it's for me, because I've got the two parallel projects, the yeah. street photography and the portraiture, and I'm obviously not uh, commuting anymore. So yesterday I was uh, down the south coast and there's this beautiful outlook across the ocean and there's often quite a few backpackers and people in vans yep. staying there. And so um, I'd just been for a surf and then I came in and there's this uh, woman standing, uh, sitting with her van mm. behind her, a crappy old van yep. full of crap and junk and she's, she's, she's backpacking and travelling. Yes. And I thought, oh, in fact, literally yesterday was the moment I've taken the, to take that series of portraits on the train and now they're just going to be extended into day-to-day -day life. And Fantastic. so it might actually become a port set of portraits of van life or something like that. But anyway, I like it. I like the sound I, of that. So I, I went and had a chat to her. We talked about the surf. She'd been for a surf. And she was you know, waiting for a partner to come in. And I said, oh, I said, look, I'm doing this series. And yep. this, is, this might be the new direction. Yeah, and people at car parks looking at the beach. I don't, Why not? I don't quite Why know. Not? But anyway, so I shot, um, I shot this young woman, Laura, and uh, wrote her story up uh, last night and put that on Instagram oh, overnight. Oh, fantastic. So that's, um, if that's on uh, hamish.tame on Instagram. So you can, see the, you can see the new direction. Yeah. Once again, we're going to put links below to all Hamish's work so you can uh, find him on Instagram and online, wherever you like. Um, so Hamish, someone was uh, thinking about getting into the GR, um, you know, what, what advice would you give them to, to shoot with it or, or, or what's really going to get people over the line? So look, a lot of people are concerned when they buy a camera with more capacity than they know mm. how to use. Yes. That they're worried about all the buttons. Yeah. And so I do think the lovely thing about uh, one of these cameras is you can put it on full, full auto mm. and you will get a great result. You know, and so, look, I've, I've got a technical degree in photography. Yep. I've got a master's degree in photography. I know how to use the gear yes. to the nth degree. But you will also get a great result. If you put that on full program mm. and full autofocus, you'll get a great result. That's what we like to hear. But, you, but you'll also then get a beautiful big sensor yep. and incredibly sharp lenses. So, look, people love their phones and the convenience of their phones. And this is, to my mind, people who want to take their photography beyond their phone, and even if they don't want to learn about aperture and shutter speed sure. and, and ISO, they can shoot with this a high quality camera uh, and then they can use that as, a, as an entry point into their phone. So interesting workflow, yeah. all the work that I shoot, uh, the portraits I do, yeah. they're not processed on the computer. I see. Often they they're eventually get stored on the computer. Yeah. So my workflow is actually literally shot on a raw file on the camera and raw files, you can yes. do all that stuff if people don't know about that stuff. But you shoot on a raw file, you can actually process them like a darkroom kind of thing mm. inside the camera. Okay, this so is interesting. You'll, you'll take a raw file, and then you can take, uh, you can go uh, exposure up a little bit, you can sharpen things, you can uh, change contrast, saturation. You can then export a JPEG, and you can have it set automatically that any JPEG that the camera produces goes to your phone. Suddenly you've got a high quality image mm. on your phone straight to social media. Fantastic. So that's how I use it. No cords and cables, wireless transfer straight oh, to your phone. So you can do Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And I mean, how cool is that? that and you can even have it set up so your phone is talking to it continuously and it knows where you took the photo. So you've got geotagging if you really want to go there too. This is really cool techie stuff.
That is very cool. So it can be as easy to use as your everyday point and shoot. If you shoot on auto mode, the camera is going to take care of all the work for you and your images are still going to look great. Um, does the Ricoh, or I'm just being told that we've just sold, we've just sold another camera on the website. So as I said, that 15% off sale is limited to the stock we have on hand. So guys, jump online now and get on board before we sell out. I might buy an extra one for myself. Just I mean, there's never behind. been a better time to, to buy. Uh, the pricing on camera products is very transparent now. Feel free to shop this round. Type in Ricoh GR3 into your search engines and see what prices come up. The price on pentax.com.au with a 15% off sale cannot be beaten. You may have woken up this morning, Hamish, you may have thought, I'm not going to buy a camera today, but at that price, absolutely, there's never been a better time to buy it, guys. So get on board, get to penhex.com. Interesting. You. One little tip yes. to be careful of is a couple of years ago, there was actually another camera called a Ricoh GR3. Is that right? Yeah. And it was another model, but it was, it was a model that on the way to getting this one. So yeah. sometimes it's about 10 years ago that that camera came out. I see. I and see. so just be careful that it's a 2019 well, yeah, that's a good little tip. Just get, <laughs> just get on penhacks.com.au and buy them directly from this website. You'll see it. You'll see it there. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, Hamish, the concept of a story in street photography is important. Um, how do you how do you use that uh, the concept of story in in your work shooting street stuff? Yeah. Look, it's it's incredibly hard to, like I said, there's the place, the people, the light is the things that, the, to my, and there's that fourth, which is that hard thing of the energy of the space. But I think that's the one the most wonderfully complex challenges that you can get when you can actually illustrate a moment in time through that thing. And that's where you're using, I mean, classically, uh, good photography has multiple levels of interest. Something in the immediate foreground, something mid, and then a couple, of, ideally a couple of layers in behind there. Um, great example of that, I was uh, in the city two or three years ago and um, the street was closed off, George Street was closed off and I realised oh, there must have been a parade or something about to happen and, and I looked down, the, down George Street and right at the end there was this big beam of light coming through and, I, and then I saw around the corner there's drums and noises and incense and I go, what's that? Anyway, it was a religious procession yep. and I go, oh that's going to be amazing, any minute now they're going to hit that patch of light and so I sprinted down yes. from one end of George Street to the other, got the camera out, pre-focused at three metres. I kind of guesstimated what the exposure would be because I do shoot full yeah. manual because I can know how to do that, but you don't need to do that. But then I got to that spot and you, oh, look, telling stories is about, for that moment, so you've, in the immediate foreground we had some kids yeah. looking at the parade. Then in, in, the, in just two or three metres behind that was processional and they have uh, a statue of the Virgin Mary yeah. with a, a cupola across the top of it. Uh, and then there's the incense, and then there's people, and then there's the city behind it. You know, the, it's the, the chasms of the city. And to my mind, that's an image that will tell a story. And the nice thing is that there's a great, once you, I lectured in uh, compositional theory yeah. at TAFE for a little while, there's a great word from those times called punctum. Now punctum is the experiences that we've had, and we bring those when we view an image. So uh, if someone sees that same photograph of a religious procession, and they've grown up in a non-religious family, they'll say that won't make much difference to them. But someone who's brought up in an Orthodox Greek community, they'll, it'll make a huge yeah. amount to them. And I think that's, that's where great art and ideally photography uh, can have these little elements that people can take their own little stories and hopefully, uh, compositionally, you're gonna guide their eye through the image. It's nice to have that, that emotional side to it, Hamish. It's not, we don't just talk tech specs and uh, technical settings yeah. here. You gotta have that emotional side to it. And I think this camera, the GR, is a very emotive camera. Um, it's got a real cult following out there. Mm. It's the most popular Ricoh model. And everyone sort of just refers to it as the GR. They don't necessarily say the Ricoh GR3. You just say GR and everyone knows what you're talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, as I said, we're doing the 15% off sale now. There's never been a better time to buy. As I said, with the way the Australian dollar has gone and getting freight into the country now with less flights is very difficult. So the stock we have on hand is the stock that is available for this 15% off sale. Um, you know, Hamish, as we're sort of coming to a close of the uh, webinar, is there anything else you want to share with us? Photo stories or, or things that you love about the GR? Yeah, look, I think it's uh, when good gear has a, has a wonderful lineage and each time it gets better and 
you know, in, in terms of you know, spin and PR and marketing, you can sometimes generate some buzz around a product. But when you've got a, a product that is genuinely very good, you, it generates its own buzz. And it's fascinating, if you jump on social media, I mean, Facebook's a good example. If you just type in, into your space bar, yeah. Rico or Rico GR, there is 10 or 15 different user sites around that are filled with images. So if you're looking for inspiration, if you're looking for ideas and ways of using the camera, uh, jump onto Facebook and look at, just type in Rico, Rico GR, GR3, you'll see a million beautiful images from everyone from professional photographers through to amateurs, uh, mums and dads, everyone in between. And it's a great way, and that's the way of building your visual literacy is to look at images continuously. Instagram's wonderful for this as well. So mm. once again, type into Instagram, uh, Rico GR, or just black and white street photography, whatever you want. And it's a great way of being visually inspired and then once you get visually inspired, then you get a new bit of gear. You, you just want to jump out there and, and shoot and create new images. Um, yeah, so guys, thanks for tuning in. We're getting a couple of questions um, through the website. Someone asked about the Pentax new APS-C camera. I mean, that looks, that looks good. We shared that with you at our Pentax 100 year anniversary event uh, late last year. We had actually had a demo mm. model of that in the country for the first time. Um, Hamish, as you guys yeah. know, obviously Rico is the owner of the Pentax brand, as everyone knows. Um, so that model is still expected to, to uh, it's still pending. Uh, it's coming soon, so um, watch this space, and as soon as we have more information on it, we'll get that up on, on the website. Um, so thanks for tuning in again today, guys. Uh, everyone out there in isolation, uh, to have someone like you here, Hamish, has been a real privilege and pleasure because we want to talk about photography as an art form, uh, as a new hobby, we want to turn your Easter isolation into creation. We want you to get creative. Um, if we've got any more questions, guys, happy to answer them now. I think we have one last one coming through before we, we wind up this uh, yep. live stream. Yep, just got one there. Uh, What's your inspiration, Hamish? Oh, okay. That's that's the good that's the good <laughs> one. Hamish, what what is what is your inspiration? Look, I I'm inspired by the stories around us, the 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 personalities and the incredibly varied experiences that we all bring uh, to this moment. And as a photographer, a documentation or an artist, what you're doing is you're trying to bring those little stories up and ideally have uh, kind of share them and re realize that, let everyone understand that, you know, there's incredibly different ways of doing life and that what we are is visual storytellers and there's a million stories around us, whether it's in the people we meet, the people we see or the places we visit. And that's incredibly inspiring to me and I, I, I'm genuinely excited by it. I love it. I look, I, I shoot this camera every day. I shoot something and it, I've got to say it brings an incredible amount to my life and as a creative medium, it's brilliant. It's, it's, good, to, it's good to have that little rule. I, you mentioned that rule before that you try and shoot something with a GR every day. And if you're taking up a new hobby, um, a bit of practice every day with a GR uh, wouldn't, go, wouldn't go astray. And it's, it's nice to have that rule in there. Um, <laughs> so guys, we're, we're coming to the end of the web, the web live stream. Um, just a few more questions we'll go through. Um, I just had one just come through online. How do you build a photo concept in your mind, Hamish? It, it's interesting. It happens organically. So there's two different things here. One is building a style of photography. And I think as an artist, that's what everyone wants. Everyone wants to actually have an identifiable style, uh, a look. People go, ah, oh, that's, that's a Hamish, that's a Clint, that's yeah. whoever. Um, and I think that, as I mentioned before, that idea of being a bowerbird, but this is the great thing about uh, image libraries like Lightroom or whatever you use, is that you can see a thousand thumbnails on your screen. And over a couple of years, you keep shooting, mm. eventually you start seeing images that, a style of image that keep building up. And I think that is really what the question's about, yep. is about how do you develop style? And I think eventually, once you've then gone through your thousands of little thumbnails on, your, on Lightroom or whatever, you're seeing, a style of image, keep it, and then you go, oh, actually, I keep being drawn to that same style of person or that kind of lighting. And once you've got that in your head, you suddenly realize, oh, I've got a thing I'm doing. It's a project. It's a, it's a discernible thing. 
And then of course, you get this wonderful feedback loop because then you start yeah. shooting more of it and you get better at it. And so then you start looking for those images. And so now every time I'm basically looking for long, sharp, hard shadows in winter time, deep patches of light, yeah. that's the stuff that I'm looking for. And that's, that's a concept I've got and that drives my vision, but also I try not, I tend not to go out if it's kind of a murky mm. day. I tend to shoot portraiture on those days. Uh, but good tip. If you know, if, if, if I've got nice deep shadows, yeah. I'm shooting that style of street, street photography. Fantastic. So, guys, as we said, there's never been a better time to get into this GR system. Well, thanks for joining us today for this uh, web live stream. Uh, we can't be we can't be with you in this day and age of social isolation. So we're going to be doing more and more of these. Uh, live web series. Uh, Hamish, an absolute pleasure. We will shake hands, in. but another we time. Would. We would. <laughs> we would have to um, elbow bump. Um, keep our social distance up. Uh, guys, stay safe this Easter. Stay at home. Get into photography. Jump online. The sale is now live. Pentax.com.au. That 15% off the entire site including the camera that we've been talking about today, the GR3. There's never been a better time to buy. Stock is limited. Once it's sold out, we w this price will not be repeated. Uh, future, future stock will come in and at a higher price and that price will go up. So if you've been thinking about it, if you've been sitting on the fence wondering, should you commit to the GR, now is the time. Guys, get on there, pentax.com.au and enjoy the 15% off for the Easter weekend or while stocks last. Hamish, great to have you on. Great to be here. You have to come back. Um, just love the way you describe photography. Love the way you talk about the GR. Thank you. And uh, it's been a really fun, fun uh, web live stream. Guys at home, happy Easter. Thanks Thank for you. joining with us. Stay safe. All the best. Cheers.